Hello, culture culprits. This is Crimson, and you're watching some Deadly Premonition. I pick up where we left off. If we finished off at the art gallery, dealing with Diana's death, I had a nice drink with George here at the bar. I had Carol sing to us. You got anything else to say, Carol? Don't sing again, please. My brother is at the sheriff's department, isn't he? Poor guy, having to watch over Nick, who didn't even do anything. Yeah, poor guy, poor Nick. Or, I have the feeling that I forgot something, Zach. What? Did I forget to pay? You want me to talk to George again? I have to? Help. Random bystander. Could I, could I, I don't know, make, a, make an escape through the window? I need to phone in my report. Maybe her dressing room has all the secrets. Save me. At least I can change my suit. Feels like this would be appropriate. Let's go change these clothes. No more clothes. Uh, looks brand new, no problem. All right, got rained on it. Can change into my nice agent clothes in her dressing room. And also steal her her normal clothes. She has to wear that dress for the rest of her life now. Okay, I guess I forgot something. George, you know what I forgot? Sorry to keep you waiting, boys. Zack. Emily is already a goddess of the forest. Huh. Let's forget work for a bit and drink a little, shall we? York? Why is she here? I just thought the more the merrier. You know, to relax and get loose. Is this a problem? No, of course not. Pardon me, Emily, but I'm pooped. I think I'll just call it a night. George, I just got here and you're walking out on me? I was hoping the three of us could have a drink and let out a little steam. I'm afraid I've already had enough. And I already had a good man-to-man -man with York. So I'll see you guys. Wingman! Well, I don't think she dressed up in her nice dress just to hang out with George. Although those, George that's shadow it, stripping. But he's avoiding you all at the same time. <laughs> How astute. There's a reason? Nothing worth going into. It's a thing of the past. Martinis for everyone? Okay, he did ask me out when I first came to town. I was still in high school. But I never really considered him my type. And there's the age gap thing, too. I respect him, of course. I wouldn't have taken this job otherwise. So, did you move to this town alone? Of course not. I came with my parents. Tell me about them, then. Sure, why not? My dad dealt in stocks in New York. He was hardly at home when I was a kid, always working. Those pieces of paper were far more important to him than I was. Which is no different now, really. I, I don't see much of him. My mother? Totally different story. A wonderful person that I still respect. She was always kind and understanding. Not only that, but she would always help me find my way. She could be fierce, too, scolding me if I took a wrong step. We had our battles, sure, but all in all, she was a wonderful mother. Past tense? Yeah, she's gone now. Cancer, just before I graduated high school. She gave this to me just before she died. I take it with me wherever I go. It's what I treasure most. Where were you keeping I'm sure it? she's very proud of you. Is that our whole conversation right there? Not gonna ask about me at all? I, I wanna know more about York. Why does he have a player character pushing his buttons from the outside? Or 
Yeah, that that works. Galaxy up. I had a good time tonight. Good night. See you tomorrow. York. Yes. Is it rude of me to not offer you my poncho? Please don't lie to us, okay? I won't. Don't worry. I won't. Is that actually called a poncho? I want to keep calling it a poncho. Yeah, Alright. I guess back to the hotel in the time limit of any time at all. Car that is hopefully has some gas in it. My poncho thing is gone. Well, full gas, full durability. Onward to objective. Had a nice time at the bar. Oh, can I can I side ah eh, whatever side objectives? I'm not worried about you. Thinking about revisiting the bar to see if I could get the creepy guy side quest I picked up, but we can side quest later. Like when I have that massive amount of time to kill. This case turned into a multiple homicide. What kind of motives turn a criminal into a serial killer? Is it hedonistic? Ritualistic? Copycat crime? Sex-related? Cannibalistic? From the Bureau's statistics. These interesting ideas don't always really explain the real motive. They're just words. Phrases that the media uses to scare citizens. The spotlight falls on a mere 1% of all cases. Only the weird ones. You understand all this, right, Zack? No matter how bizarre a crime may appear to be, at the root, there is always rage and personal interest. Right, Zack? Most people simply don't kill for pleasure. But that kind of common sense never applies to our investigations. Maybe we're lucky. Or unlucky, depending on how you look at it. We end up working on those cases in that 1%. Do you remember, Zach? The first case we handled, just after becoming a special agent? Now let's talk about this another time. I don't feel like it right now. Alright, so yeah. I think sex motivated, ritual motivated. Those seem like they're a thing. Since all the murders seem to be happening to these particular women during a particular activity. But around this town that seems to happen a lot now we're we going over everything I'm not changing my suit man I'm sure a chain smoker guess if it's a magical help me profile better button like I have a glove and sunglasses that let me go to Mars or something Zach let's go over our progress from what Olivia told us, and the sketchbook we found at Becky's house, Nick and Diane became our primary suspects. There were a couple of reasons for this. First, Becky gave the missing locket to Diane. Also, Nick has no alibi for when Anna and Becky were killed. We followed Nick to the art gallery, which led us, unfortunately, to our third victim. The third victim. Diane was strung up in the entrance hall of the art gallery. Her hands were tied and a knife was sticking out of her chest. However, there was a marked difference from the previous crimes. Do you remember what that was, Zach? He was alive? It was right after the crime. I'll go with that one. That's right. Diane was still alive. This suggests that very little time had passed since the crime was committed. Which means the criminal was still close by. It was someone near the scene. There are two possible candidates. Nick, who was knocked out in the entrance, and one other. Zach, who was the other person in the gallery? 
The big guy. <laughs> it was Harry. He did it. That's right. Casey. We followed Willie. Good dog. All the way to him. Casey's statement came out as follows. He and Diane were in a physical relationship. That was why he visited the gallery. The two were in the middle of such a meeting when Nick showed up. Diane lost her cool and shut Kaysen up in the basement. Now what did Kaysen hear when he was locked up? Men's boots. Gunfire. That's it. The sound of boots passing by. Nick was wearing boots that day. Which means it was likely that Diane met with Nick in her room. Nick said he argued verbally with Diane about her playing around with men, but they eventually decided to go out drinking to make up. However, immediately after that, Nick was attacked by someone in the entrance hall and knocked unconscious. We saw the rest. That doesn't Zach, do sound right. That Nick is our serial killer. No. Me too. Asha sent in a report too. He found a large volume of red seeds in Diane's stomach. This confirms her as a victim of the raincoat killer. Remaining leads. There is the locket, which is in Carol's possession. The man with the tattooed back and the upside down peace sign. There's a lot left to answer. I hope the coffee will give us more guidance tomorrow. That's what you're hoping for? Going to sleep fully clothed? Zach, what did Hello? you think about George pouring his heart out? I was surprised. It's the end of a monarchy. And he called me York instead of Agent Morgan. Take it as much. Emily? What's going on? Do you know what time it is? I'm... Um, I'm sorry. I... I couldn't sleep, so... I was drinking alone. And decided to hang out in my bedroom My with mother me. was a very kind woman. She always smiled so brightly. Baked cakes and cookies every day. She'd say that I needed the sugar because I spent so much time thinking. My father was always quiet. We never talked much. He was a federal agent, just like me. And he was hardly ever at home. The only words he ever had for me were harsh ones. I had a vivid imagination, and I remember he once said this to me. There are plenty of crazy things in this world. You don't have to go dreaming them up and it's my job to make sense out of them. One day you'll understand what I'm saying. I found out later that my father was one of the first to ever use criminal profiling to catch bad guys. And so now I'm doing exactly the same job that he did. Like father, like son. Mm, can I ask you something? Shoot. Mind if it's something personal? Fire away. I don't know if I find you attractive, right? No? Who's Zach? Oh. <laughs> That's me! Um, Zach is a friend of mine. Oh, so you do have friends. <laughs> yeah. He's my only friend. The picture behind me. What kind of person is he then? Don't describe me. Well, I, I've never seen his face. But he's always with me, and we discuss everything. When did you become friends? A long time ago. Back when I was a child. Really? I've only known you since you, uh, well, the start of this game when you got to town. Watched you crash the car with horrible audio. It was great. I was seven. 
I woke up one morning to hear my mother crying in the living room. This wasn't normal, so I headed in to see her. My father was there pointing a gun at my mother. I was so scared. I closed my eyes, so I, I don't remember much more. But I do remember the words my father said to me. At times we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. When I came back to my senses, they were both dead. He shot my mother and then killed himself. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. Zach's with me. It was around that time that we became friends. I'm here. I'm with you, he said. I'll be here always. We can get through this together. Quite aside from that terrible scene in front of me, that voice seemed to make me calmer. And here we are, working together, getting through things. This is the first time I've ever told anyone about this. I wonder if Zack will get angry. That's a sad story, but I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I'm sure there was a reason for what your father did. I know. I think maybe I became an agent to find out why he did what he did. Oh, oh yeah, York, I, I forgot to thank you. Thank me? For what? You saved my life. If you didn't save me at the gallery, I would have died along with Diane. No need to thank me for that. I'm pretty useless. I couldn't save Becky. I couldn't save Diane. What did you just say? Useless? <laughs> I was never expecting to hear you say that. Huh. There might be a modest guy in you after all. Finally, you noticed? You're a little slow, aren't you? Maybe <laughs> hopeless, but not useless. Zach, do you think Emily got home safely? Anyway, I think it's more serious of a situation than I thought. Do you remember? Our conversation with Emily. She's really interested in you. I think she's starting to have certain feelings for you. If that's the case, Zack, you and I are rivals. This is a very serious situation indeed. Well, I know you're talking to a voice in your head. Well, if it comes to that, let it be a fair fight. But you're Agreed. being pretty crazy. You, you can, you can have her. You're, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Me, the voice in your head. Thomas! 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 Let me out of here! Come on, please! Just for a moment, one second. Hate it in here, Thomas. I'm going mad. Why is the spooky red music playing? Come on, please! Thomas! 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 So are all the people that relied on you to cook for them at the diner going to starve now? Hmm. Are you gonna sing again quietly? Or, or is this happening? Well, this is awkward. Hmm. Why does everyone in this town have to be into that kind of stuff, huh? Okay. Passed. Cleared. Ten days. 
Three continues? I don't even... Three continues? Probably all hazards. Insta-kill hazards that require quick timey thingies. Hey, episode two, part two. Cleared. Even putting up that same biscuit. Back view, I, dude, I don't need this. That's just a clip show of what's going on. Well, four kids. Episode 3, 14, tea break. Okay, well this is fancy. I'll go ahead and end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. And my hat is off to you.